Chapter 16, Gravitory of Light. Let us accept a priori, for example, that simple light has a lower mass than that suitable for electronics. We've been saying that every cosmic manifestation is a content of time. This being so because the electronic mass is without sensible error, or because the error committed when taking this result for its value derived from the whale integral does not significantly affect the calculation, because now we're dealing with geometric shapes, but simply we are not dealing with geometric shapes, but simply with density as a concentration of the entire continuous quantity of the field in the spherical limit of radius A. It means then that light energy in all its monochromatic manifestations has very little to almost no variation in mass because, as can be seen, the introduction of monochromatic times into electronic time produces a change in them almost nil, giving us naturally for each color a time almost equal to that of the electron itself. The change is very little but sufficient, perhaps for even if it is very little, to deduce that of col that each color is a content of electricity, like the smallest spherical capacity contained as an unfading energetic knot in the elliptical space that completes it. Each color, by constituting a simple field in isolation, expresses an electronic modality that is within the concept of our work. A greater or lesser cosmic homogeneity, homogeneity of continuous quantity of energy. I mean, as a condensation of space in the measure of a geometric differentiation of it. And the synthesis, the supreme synthesis of all colors, is a gravitational mooring of them contained in a dizzying vector. Physical behavior of light in the middle of an infinitely large consortium, therefore, no one can deny within the ordinary train of universal gravitation. From all this, it is understood, let it be said again, that the shapes of the universe is independent of the light path. For us, antagonists of the wise Einstein, at this moment of relative science, seen as the only one that corresponds to nature. The march of light has no importance except insofar as it is a vector that is confused with its rectilinear path through variable space and perfectly adjusted to this. From here then, the relativistic formula must be affected by the speed of light as an essential constant. However, how are simple monochrome fields tied together? Each simple field within the small polycosmos of white light, for example, is an elliptical space contained between two continuums of the same geometric type, between the energetic core and the infinite limit. And due to the promiscuity of these spaces contained in the incompatibility, perhaps weak, almost non-existent, of monochromatic times, since those are nothing but electronic modalities that differ very little from each other, it engenders ipso facto the hyperbolic geometry of the heavens or spaces of the universal interluminous centrifuge. The cosmic push against the small masses is determined, therefore, as an inevitable fact, and also the centripetal reaction of the same, once they, as occurs in the stars and planets, tend to remain in the static position of their own content of place and time. Because, as is known, each energy concentration continues beyond its sensitive radius infinitely. Inertia, then, as the mechanical principle indispensable for the reaction can be fulfilled, that is, it has a means for its law, because we believe it is within the competence of the reader, but we did not make this principle explicit in the chapter on the hyperbolic heavens, the cosmic mooring with the external environment, with terrestrial space, for example, of the set of that set of monochromatic electrons is explained by the same hyperbolic or quasi-hyperbolic principle of space generated by the incompatibility of times. Thus, the times of red and violet, and violet, when these were the limits of the small polycosmos of white light would disagree with the common time of the Earth. 
The centrifugal or external compression is imposed, therefore, as a providence so that the light subsists in its harmonic train and within the complete integration of all its monochromatic elements through the heavens or interstellar spaces. The reduction of the spectrum, depending on the location, without a doubt depends on this. It is proven with all this because it is necessary that the luminous electrons have a rotation movement. These axes, these axes given the narrow limit of the entire system and the minimal smallness of the electronic radius are sensibly equal. The circumstance of the major axis together with that other reason why the minor axes of these curves are very small relative to the first one since these ellipses are and have to be very elongated. Because of all this and because the total field enclosure is very narrow, the moment in which each electron is at its corresponding vertex immediately suggests the idea of the spherical fields for the entire system. On the other hand, since the monochromatic times are almost equal, it is deduced that the difference in speed of these microplanets in their movements around the red concentration is very small, enough for all those microcosmos to reach together at the shortest distance from the common focus, from the small red sun. Here then is the alternative of light vibration. At the start of a period, for example, all the electrons are grouped in the smallest space almost hooked on that sun or microscopic star. At this instant, the electrons following the elliptical direction of their respective trajectories separate in the same effects as if they had followed radial direction within the entire apparent spherical field. The fact is that this area, the smallest space referred to, is an area of electronic crossing. Given the narrowness in which these small stars move, for this very reason, they, when they occupy the smallest nuclear distance, they produce the effect of a cosmic concentration of the light field, alternative to that radiation, and the effect of an amplitude of the same. A half wave will be fulfilled, therefore, when all the lights of the monochromatic elements are at the elliptical vertices. The electromagnetic phenomenon with which the wise have attempted to explain the intimate nature of light is simply an experience of this reality of the law in all the cosmic circumstances of nature. We repeat it, those, ellips those, ellipses, those ellipses that are so microscopic being so equal in their major axis is so elongated and with such various inclinations for their planes above all because the red nucleus covers their common center. They produce a sensible effect of a field of, of, field of light as if it were a spherical space of the variable radius. Within the general law that governs the phenomena, it is possible to find the radius even smaller than that suitable for the electron because it is feasible that the monochromatism we're dealing with is also systematic. These electrons, planets, and that gravitational system of white light are, however, separably, but separable by means of a prism. In electromagnetic theory, this separation is not explained. Much less could this be explained in the theory of transverse vibrations of the ether. Our gravitational theory of light has great support from spectral reduction already so empirically proven. Non-reduction is to some extent incompatible with light gravity. So that our theory of the gravitation of light has all its empirical proof in the reduction of the light spectrum. A polymicrocosm or white light behaves like a single and the same field mass or variable space and time, but with such a minuscule variation that the spectral ensemble appears to us to be rigidly stationary, in accordance of course with the place and circumstances of the universe. We can accept 
the polycosmos, that field or space in which understood that the little star of light is therefore inevitable. The introduction of light time in the solar field implies it is true, a contraction of the small polycosmos, a reduction of the white light. But the efficient cause as the only determinant of the phenomenon is the cosmic push of the external field as a content of space generated by that incompatibility of the solar and luminous times. Because remember well, non-collision and stellar harmony are guaranteed by celestial geometry.